What is going on guys? I'm back here with you today to talk more about some of the announcements from AWS reInvent 2020. I already did a pretty comprehensive video on the Andy Jassy keynote and some of the major product announcements. Uh, so if you haven't watched that, go ahead and check that out. But there were some things that I decided not to include that I think I should have, and that's what this video is gonna be about. And there's also have been some more feature enhancements and announcements that have been trickling in over the course of the week. So I wanna cover those as well. So here, we're just gonna talk about some of those new things. So let's just jump right into it. Um, so the first thing that was announced at the Andy Jassy keynote, but I kind of glossed over a little bit, was the fact that Lambdas are now gonna be supporting containers. Uh, so for those of you that are really big fans of Docker, or maybe you've kind of uh, work at a company where you've really invested in Docker, but you like the kind of serverless approach that you get with Lambda functions, uh, this is gonna be an important announcement for you because you're gonna be able to um, kind of create images that are up to 10 GB maximum size, upload that to Lambda, and let Lambda worry about provisioning the infrastructure for you. All you have to do is define the image, click on start, and pretty much just go. Uh, so huge announcement. A lot of people are very excited about this, and I just wanted to make sure I covered it. Uh, the other big one that I think is really important, kind of like a small announcement, but very important, is the fact that S3 is gonna be supporting strong consistency. Uh, so what this means is if, you, if you've never heard about strong consistency, you don't know what it is. In order to understand this, you need to know about how it used to work, which was eventual consistency. And what eventual consistency means is that if you were to perform a put operation or an update operation on an S3 file or an S3 object, um, there's a delay between when that data gets replicated from one master node that kind of accepted that request and when that data gets propagated into the other replica nodes. That means that if you have two, uh, if you have a, a write that takes place and then you have a read very, very close in time, I'm talking about like milliseconds, but this can be, you know, a variable duration. Uh, it's possible that your read would get the old version of the data or an out of date version of the data. Uh, if you're running mission critical applications, this is something that you know you can't tolerate. So um, as of, I believe when that announcement was made, which was a few days ago, um, S3 is now gonna be strongly consistent for all put, update, and list operations. So huge deal if you're in that space and you've been kind of uh, dealing with the pain of eventual consistency in S3. Uh, the third one also along the same lines in S3 is uh, multi-region or multi-destination replication. Um, so previously what they had was that if you wanted to kind of replicate your data from one S3 bucket uh, to another one, it could be cross region, cross account. Uh, you can do that, but you can only have one destination. Now with this recent announcement, you're gonna be able to do that with any number of destinations. Um, so what people had to do was like kind of spin off their own infrastructure. This was super annoying. You didn't wanna do this and waste time with it. Now it's just a couple buttons away. So you just have to click, click, click and just set all this stuff up in the console. Pretty cool. Uh, the fourth one, again, back to Lambda, is something called Lambda Insights. And Lambda Insights were announced earlier in the year in October in preview mode, and uh, it's now generally available. And what Lambda Insights are, are, kind of, it's a feature that you can enable on your Lambda function. It's just kind of a checkbox that you can enable. And by doing so, Lambda will start gathering all of these comprehensive metrics related to your Lambda function, including things like memory usage, CPU usage, um, other kind of metrics that are important in the context of running Lambda functions, so things like throttling and all that. Put all that stuff on a nice dashboard for you to analyze. I'm just scratching the surface here, just telling you about what this feature is uh, in general, but, and a great part of this feature is that it gives you the ability to figure out what the best memory setting for your Lambda function is. A lot of people struggle with this, finding the best uh, price point. And if you didn't know the way this worked previously, the relationship between memory and Lambdas um, the more memory that you had provisioned for your Lambda function, the more expensive it would be. But it also meant that your Lambda function's invocation duration would be shorter. Uh, so some people would do a lot of experimentation trying to figure out like what's the perfect memory setting for my application where I can maximize performance in terms of latency, but also not be wasteful in terms of just burning money when you don't necessarily need it. So all these things are included now in this new functionality in Lambda Insights. So go ahead and check that out uh, if this is of interest to you. 
Um, the next one, which was announced in the Jassy keynote, which I, I didn't discuss uh, in my previous video, uh, was Amazon doubling down on Amazon Connect. And for those of you that don't know about Amazon Connect, at least I didn't know anything about this service until this announcement came out. Uh, it's basically a service that lets you set up the infrastructure for call centers, especially with COVID and everything around that and the working from home environment that we're all currently in. Uh, this has become much, much more important, not just for, for AWS, uh, support, but also for other companies all around the world. Uh, so they added a whole bunch of new features here, including something called wisdom, profiles, tasks, and voice ID. Uh, so working backwards, voice ID is basically like automatic protection on who your, your customer is. So you don't necessarily need to answer kind of identity verification questions. Uh, there's this tasks edition where you, a manager can assign tasks to their uh, employees. There's profiles, so you can pull up past cases as they relate to a customer. And then there's wisdom, which uh, is a kind of neat tool where um, Connect will automatically detect who the customer is that's calling and pull up all the relevant information as the call is going on. So if someone says like, my product is broken during the course of the conversation, um, Connect can hook into your data sources and show all the relevant information, maybe like past complaints or things like that. Pretty cool feature in the call center space and it's good to see that they're kind of supporting uh, what businesses need in this kind of difficult time. The next one was uh, something called serverless batch job. So if you use AWS batch, you'll know that it's a very powerful tool for large scale batch processing jobs or batch computing jobs. And so how it used to work was that you needed to provision either uh, EC2 instances or you needed to get spot EC2 instances for your batch jobs to run. Uh, spot instances can be pretty expensive as you may or may not already know. Uh, but now with this new feature, you're gonna be able to use Fargate, which is kind of a serverless um, infrastructure. So you don't need to worry about provisioning or getting those EC2 instances anymore or monitoring them. It's all going to be handled by AWS. So you don't need to worry about the infrastructure at all. Pretty cool if you're into AWS batch computing. So the last one is called the public ECS registry. And if you know Docker and you know Docker Hub, Docker Hub is the place where you can basically get images that are already built and it's kind of stored and maintained on the Docker Hub website. Um, this is now coming to AWS. So um, you as a user can upload and kind of tag any images that you may have. Uh, you can share that with your friends, your coworkers, even the general public. People can search in the repository and find anything that they want. Uh, in terms of limits for that, that's something I was interested in. I didn't want to get charged a ton. Uh, you get 50 gigabytes of uh, free upload if you're going to be uploading. Um, if you are an anonymous user, you get up to 500 gigabytes of download. But if you register, you get up to five terabytes of download. So uh, lots of resources there if you're going to be using this functionality a lot. So that's it for this video. If you didn't see my other one where I talked a lot about the major product announcements from the Andy Jassy keynote, I'll put that down in the description section below. And thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.